One of the things that I want to do for a global campaign is have definite targets that we can all buy in on. So the obvious one is media strategy. Are you going to target a lot of activity around specific destinations? You know, there's 230 countries covered in the book, so we can actually give you a shot for every single country, and we can then target that down. Uh, the UK, for example, are, are going to try to do a balance in terms of very much say talk about European countries mm -hmm. because then that goes to that strategy of trying to be seen well being seen as a you know we very much cover Europe but they're also going to balance it with we then do far flung destinations as well so they're going to cover some of those out of the out of the way places right. off the beaten track how, how about you guys I think that I would go with um, a, a larger approach I, I mean a, a page a day on a country to be able yeah. to present the world to people yeah. around the world yeah. you know with images and you know the kind of text that we provide yeah. it would be amazing to say actually at the end of this say three month campaign around the world with mm -hmm. this global book right. so let's just say we did a viral email campaign and we because someone in um, you know New York could open up this email with this image on it's the same image that they see in a bookshop campaign right. or if they get on a plane and fly to London they see they'll see the same image yeah. or if they open up the newspaper and open up you know, maybe they go to Bangkok post online right. they see the same image so I want a consistency in our branding through that image how we talk about it here might be a little bit different than how you talk yeah. about it in Australia yeah. or how they talk about it in the UK yeah. but you can actually get caught up in a lot of navel gazing at, in what does global really mean and we know, I know because I've done that for the best part of two years, trying to figure out how, what's the best way for global marketing, global sales, global product to really work when actually global doesn't really exist in, in a lot of senses. Um, when you talk about global marketing, marketing is all about work, talking with that customer and that customer isn't thinking global, they're thinking about their immediate environment, immediate context. So for example, we were launching our Chinese book uh, our first edition of Australia in Chinese in the China market, how we'll communicate in that market might be very different to how we'll do it in, say, the, in the London office and talking to Londoners going over to, say, Paris for a quick weekend break. And so the, really the, the answer we came up to in, in terms of what is global is there's a certain level, there's a layer of globalness that we want to achieve, and very much so in a lot of our product we are talking to an audience which shares many things. They've got a passion for travel. They are very much uh, thinking about travel a lot of the time. Uh, it's important to them. They feel that travel can, can change and does change the world, which has a certain kind of like appeal to all markets. But we then work that into the local markets so that the message actually is still relevant to each, each individual. Does that make sense? I heard someone use the phrase globular branding once. What's your take on that? I think blending versus branding is one of those things you can get into your, you can kind of huddle up into a little group and agonize over it for hours in terms of if a brand is tried to work in all kinds of markets and you try to dumb down to the lowest common denominator so if there's no agreement in any one market apart from this one element then let's put our brand around this. So for example the one thing that we all agree on is in that travel is important. So all our markets, regardless of where you're from, we all think that travel is important. Now if we just did a message on that, travel is important, that isn't going to make us very different to say National Geographic or Fodors or Discovery or um, a whole wealth of different people who are in the travel industry. So that to me is blanding. That's the lowest common denominator. You have to get brave in saying something different to, to the world now because people are too savvy about marketing. They're, they're, they've heard it before. They will spot a mile off if an advert has been dubbed over with the local language or the advert has just, you know, or the advert you see on the, in a paper has got um, you know, a, some sort of generic image which just like your eyes just wash over. Look, there's, there is, there's one shot that I think that we should be using in all markets. It's quite challenging. Um, it's quite controversial. That image, when I presented it to the staff, was probably the most disliked image. And so it was like, here's this person who appears that they would just rather have you yeah. go away. And not every shot needs to be, or can be, a happy, amazing... The world is not all happy. 
And we want this. This book is capturing the entire world. Right. And for me, although she's, um, you know, she's not smiling. She's not. It's not like kind of like relaxed. It does confront you a little bit. It does push you out of your comfort zone in making you look at that. So although you're saying the staff here in the U.S. felt it didn't work because of that reason, right. that's precisely why I feel we should be using it in a global campaign. Oh, as part of the campaign, so as a, as like yeah. a lead image or something. <coughs> So uh, this, this is where we have to, at some point, we're going to have to, well, if we agree to disagree, right. I think we're going to start diluting the campaign. So I think we've got a, a challenge here in terms of, is this an image where we just feel it's so risky to use, it's going to offside the campaign in this market? Or do we think we can actually push the boat out and do something which we wouldn't normally do and try something new? You have to be brave and put your stake in the sand and go, this is a company what we represent. If you don't want to listen to me when I'm talking about this, that's fine. Do your own thing. We don't want you as a customer. So you have to be very clear and brave globally in terms of we're okay. it's okay to not talk to that customer. In fact, we don't mind if that customer hates us. But we do know that this customer loves us and that's who we're going to talk to. And branding is all about having that distinction and having a very loud voice um, that resonates with your target market, regardless of where they're from. What do you like most about working for a global company? I, I used to work in the UK office and then came over to the Australia office. And one of the things I enjoy you know, in my role in, in global promotions, global sales, is you, you, are, you are facing different challenges every day. Different markets have got different deadlines, they've got different needs. So I'd recommend anyone to give it a go to work in international marketing at some point because it's a whole new learning curve that you're on. Everything that you thought you knew about the market that you worked in, the domestic market, all the assumptions that you had, I know this promotion will work well in X, it makes you rethink that. And it questions all your skills in terms of business, management, leadership, marketing, knowing your customer, all that stuff about your competition, about how to have superior profitability, about superior growth. All of that is questioned on an international context. And you have to get brave. And that's what I love most about the job. At some point, you have to call the shot and go, all right, guys, we kind of agree here. We disagree there. We're going to have to make a decision and move on. Let's do X.